Let's talk business. This is how we're moving yours forward. Standard Bank, moving forward. From Crema Media in Johannesburg, this is the Real Economy Report. An intensive protection zone, or IPZ, using sophisticated detection and tracking equipment on the ground as well as in the air, is to be established to combat rhino poaching in South Africa's flagship Kruger National Park and assess anti-poaching tactics that can be applied in other regions of Africa. Natalie Grieve attended the launch of the initiative to find out more. The IPZ, made possible by a 255 million rand donation from philanthropist Howard Buffett through his private US-based charity, the Howard G. Buffett Foundation, would include the creation of elite canine units, highly trained ranger teams, improved intelligence gathering and observation, as well as an enhanced surveillance system. Buffett, the son of billionaire US investor Warren Buffett, likened South Africa's fight against poaching to the US's border war on drugs, noting that the Kruger Park, which spanned Limpopo and Pumalanga, was currently home to over 40% of the world's remaining 22,000 rhinos, the largest single population of rhinos in the world. So today we're here to announce the easy part. This is the very easy part, which is a 255 million rand contribution to support sand parks in their fight on their anti-poaching effort. <laughs> Give or take on the exchange rate, but close. We have been involved in anti-poaching efforts in Central African Republic, in, in DR Congo, in Rwanda, in Gabon, and those are all driven because our foundation tends to work in conflict and post-conflict countries. And when you see what conflict does to people, you cannot turn away. But that conflict is fueled by rhino horns, elephant ivory. It's a, it's, it's a criminal activity. So for us, Sand Parks is the right place, the right people, the right plan, and the right time. You don't always get that opportunity. So um, I was convinced at a dinner that this, though all those circumstances exist and it's the time to do it. The reason it's kind of time to do it, we're losing the battle. We're losing the battle all across the continent. So if we can learn fast enough the right things in this country, we can export that learning. The funding announcement came as South African National Parks last month increased the total number of rhino poached in South Africa since the beginning of the year to 172, with South Africa's largest park remaining the hardest hit, having lost 113 rhinos since January 1st. A total of 18 rhino have been poached for their horn in Limpopo, 17 in the northwest and 11 in KwaZulu-Natal. Since January 2010, 1,383 rhino have been poached within the Kruger Park, forming part of a larger assault that had resulted in the death of 2,368 rhino in recent years. Environmental Affairs Minister Edna Molewa, who represented her department at the announcement of the funding initiative, assured Buffett that the country was determined not to lose this fight. We are putting stops, all stops, and we do think that it is important to fight this battle like it has never been fought before. We always say rhino will never ever be decimated, not on our watch. And that must be what we all preach, what we all sing, what we all dream of, and what we always do, all of us, not on our watch. It will not be decimated, not on our watch. Malay were told Engineering News Online that government would continue to work with private sector stakeholders and foreign governments in a bid to develop policy and establish bilateral agreements that would diminish the threat of poaching. This gesture of donation that we received today comes very handy in terms of ensuring that we get those aerodromes, we get whatever facility as technology that can help us to go over uh, the whole park because it's a, quite a huge park, Kruger National Park is very huge that we reach every space and any space through technology. And this we see as helping us to minimize or even to break the neck of those who are really poaching 
our rhinos. It's an international syndicate. We don't underestimate it, but we're fighting this battle to win and not just to, you know, just, just to eradicate or to just elevate, alleviate it, but just, just to win. We are saying not on our watch. Other news making headlines this week, Gauteng advances its master plan for non-motorized transport infrastructure and South Africa's TB epidemic is one of the worst worldwide. The Gauteng Roads and Transport Department is currently developing a non-motorized transport or NMT master plan that will integrate all municipal NMT network plans in the province and commit sustainable sources of funding for the development of associated infrastructure. So that's really the role of the, of the Commission. At least all the municipalities in principle see the importance of non-motorized transport and once you've got that in principle agreement, it's just how do you share resources, expertise and work together to promote it. South Africa's status as the country that has one of the highest number of tuberculosis cases worldwide has put a spotlight on efforts to arrest and reverse the number of people living with the 100-year-old disease, thereby realizing economic benefits of about 13 billion rand. TB in the mining sector is not just a health issue, but an economic, labor and development issue. One that requires a collective, coordinated approach, especially given the fact that mining contributes so significantly to development on the continent. TB in the mining sector is a particular challenge due to the fact that the prevalence of TB is higher in mining communities than it is in the general population. That's Creamy Media's Real Economy Report. Join us again next week for more news and insight into South Africa's real economy.